Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. So after you've completed your movement and palpation tests, you may wish to look at some functional tests to see how your patient's lower limb performs during dynamic movements. In this video, we're going to be taking you through some functional tests for the knee joint, including a double leg squat, a single leg squat, and a lunge. As well as using these movements during your assessment, you may also wish to use them in future sessions to see if your patient's condition has progressed or regressed. Let's get into our main video so we can have a look at these movements. Let's get clinical! So a quick and very important note before we start. Recent evidence has shown that when people have no symptoms, the way we do activities such as squatting doesn't necessarily predict pain, i.e. if you see someone squatting with their knees out and they don't have pain already, the way they squat is not a good predictor of their knee pain. Therefore, what we would like to suggest is that you take some of the ideas we give you in this video and then really justify when it comes to your patient. For example, if they squat with their knees out and it's painful, and then you reduce this and it's not painful, then you have justified it. If they single leg dip in one way on the affected side, and then you correct it so that it matches the unaffected side and their pain reduces, then you have justified it. This helps us take our clinical reasoning to a new level by taking recent evidence into account and thinking critically about each individual patient. So first we're going to analyse our patient doing a double leg squat. Start by looking at how your patient actually performs the double leg squat. If they squat with the weight forwards on the knee, which increases pain on the knee, this can tell you that the joint is not happy when weight is placed through it anteriorly. This can be consistent with anterior knee pain, or a patellofemoral problem. Do the heels come up when they squat? If so, this may tell you that they have a tight soleus or that they have hypomobility of the foot and ankle joint where your patient's ankle is restricted in terms of dorsiflexion. If that was the case, you could see if squatting with the weight through the heels makes their pain easier. If it does, you can offer them a wall squat or even a wall squat with the towel underneath the toes to make it easier for them. Next, have a look at the squat in an anterior view. Look for one or both of your patient's knees going into an excessive valgus position. This will put abnormal forces through the knee joint, and one possible reason for this may be gluteal weakness, or a generalised lower limb weakness. This patient may benefit from a full lower limb strengthening program, rather than just isolated knee-specific exercises. Look for range and apprehension, which can also give you something to review from one session to the next. However, you can also look and see if your patient squats with their knees going into an excessive varus position, which is most common who, for patients who hold their hips in excessive lateral rotation. So whatever pattern your patient takes during their double leg squat, don't immediately make an assumption, such as this patient has a tight soleus or this patient has weak glutes, because it may be that they perform this squat in their habitual way. However, if you ask your patient to correct the movement and they are unable to correct it, then this gives you your reasoning to suggest that your assumption was justified. So now we're going to look at our patient performing a single leg dip. Apprehension during this movement is often key. There may be a clear difference in how low your patient can dip between the right and the left, where they are able to dip less far on the more apprehensive side. Also look at the knee drawing into an excessive valgus position with a pelvic tilt so that the hip drops out in a Trendelenburg fashion. As we discussed with a double leg squat, one reason for this may be a gluteal weakness and or a general lower limb deconditioning. Also consider that with a single leg squat, the quadriceps muscles are working eccentrically. So any difference between right and left could be due to this muscle being weak. Bear in mind that the single leg squat can be a very provocative movement for pain. You can give your patient an easier version of this exercise by getting them to rest their non-testing leg on a step. The aim of doing this is to see if this reduces their knee pain from an assessment approach. If it does, you could ask your patient to complete this as an exercise at home in an attempt to improve their single leg dip. And now we're going to look at a lunge, which is a great way of testing power, stability, proprioception, and apprehension. Start by asking your patient to lunge on their affected and unaffected sides. Firstly, look at their balance. Can they maintain their balance whilst doing the lunge, 
or does their front leg wobble as they are performing the lunge? If they cannot hold their balance, this may tell you about differences in proprioception between the right and left sides. Also look at the knee position. Does your patient's knee fall into an excessive valgus position? As we have talked about before, this could be due to a gluteal weakness and or a general lower limb deconditioning. Next, we're going to have a look at the lunge in a lateral view. Things to look at here. Is your patient able to push themselves back from the lunge position to standing? Can they do this effectively by pushing back with the front leg? Or do they favour using their back leg to bring them back to the centre? If they do favour the back leg, this is likely to be because their, your patient is compensating for either pain or weakness in the front leg. As we have said before, a lunge is also a good way of looking at apprehension. So look at the way that your patient does this to see for signs of apprehension. One sign may be if they are reluctant to flex their front knee on one side as much as the other side. Another sign of apprehension may be if your patient is reluctant in bringing their pelvis forwards. It looks like they are just flexing the lumbar spine rather than actually putting their weight through their knee. A final sign of apprehension is if your patient is dipping their back knee less on the affected side compared to the unaffected side and instead it may look as if the knee is in more extension rather than in a fully flexed position. So to summarise this video on functional tests of the knee joint. Use your functional test as an assessment tool to gauge your patient's function as well as an objective marker which you can compare in later sessions. Today we have looked at a double leg squat, a single leg dip and a lunge. Look for the different observations that we have taken you through in this video for each test to help you recognise any differences between your patient's affected and unaffected sides. And that completes our video on functional tests of the knee joint. As we said earlier, you may choose to use these functional tests as a part of your assessment, but you can also use them in future sessions to see whether or not your patient's condition has progressed or regressed. You can also give these movements to your patient as specific exercises for them to do at home, so that they can really work on the issues that you've identified during your assessment. Thank you once again for watching us here on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.